Education in Service of the Gospel. Cordoba, April 30, 2000. This talk on Education in Service of the Gospel was given by SR. Rita Burley in Cordoba for a large group of teachers from across Spain. It formed part of the events which were organized on the occasion of the 150th anniversary of the birth of St. Rafaela Maria. Throughout her exposition, she points out the importance of education in service of the gospel for the handmaids of the Sacred Heart, from the very beginnings of the Institute. She emphasizes the necessity of forming our students in crucial values in the context of the year 2000, a complex and difficult world, but one which also has great richness. It is a joy for me to be here today with you, the representatives of the handmade schools in Spain. Although on some occasions we have met one another personally or in small groups, this is the first time that I am officially meeting with all of you. Seeing you fills me with emotion. You are the ones who dedicate yourselves with generosity to the educational work in our centers. Some of you have been working there for many years. You have given the best years of your life to teaching. Others, younger, share your initiatives and new perspectives in this precious work of education. In all of you I perceive enthusiasm, eagerness, commitment, there is so much energy here. It is very significant that we are having this meeting in Cordoba, the city so dear to St. Rafaela Maria. She used to walk through its streets. As a young girl, she gave herself forever to God, and years later, began her religious life here. Cordoba holds precious memories of St. Rafaela Maria. For us it is a sacred space. Here we breathe her style, her spirit, her faith, she, who had such an interest in education and service of the gospel, has gathered us in her city, in this year when we celebrate the 150th anniversary of her birth. In the days of St. Rafaela Maria, the teachers were all handmaids. Currently, the greater part of the faculty in our centers consists of lay persons. On seeing us now, lay teachers and handmaids together, what would St. Rafaela Maria say to us? I think that, Looking at us with affection and interest, she would say that she is happy that we work together, joining forces, in an attitude of collaboration and sharing of our talents. She would say that she counts on us to make a reality one of the ideals she held most dear, education in service of the gospel and centered on the Eucharist, in our case, in Spain at the beginning of the third millennium. The Value of Education Currently, because of my work, I have to travel frequently in order to share with the sisters the concerns and the challenges posed to us in living our vocation in different contexts. Through these journeys I have had the opportunity to get to know many countries, to see firsthand their cultural, social, economic and religious situations, and of one thing I grow ever more convinced, the importance of education. When I visit developing countries, I feel intensely the need for education for the children and youth. Without people who are prepared, how can they develop their country? How can they improve the quality of life? What future can they hope for? I have just been in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. There, in a neighborhood in Kinshasa, we have a kindergarten. Our children, on finishing this first stage of preschool, have no further means to continue studying. This is a cause for sorrow. However, it is not only the children of the developing countries who need education. The children of Europe, and concretely those of Spain, have the same need, since education is an indispensable instrument for the true development and progress of the people, for the respect for human rights. It is education that allows us to be protagonists of our own existence and architects of the transformation of society, because the fruit of genuine education is always a consistent person who knows who he is and what life is for. A free person, that is to say one not ruled by chance, by popular opinion, the judgment of the others or his own weakness, a person with a critical sense who knows how to value the good, 
the true and the beautiful wherever these are found and knows also how to discover and reject the fabric of selfishness that runs through many of the structures of our society. A person who does not let himself be destroyed by the evil in the world, but on the contrary, places at the service of life, in union with all those who work for it, the knowledge and the capacity that he has acquired during his formation. These are the people that the world needs today. I remember that several years ago, in the face of the challenges and the promises which the third millennium held out to us, the president of UNESCO said that there is no salvation other than education. I agree with this idea. In the last chapters of our institute, we too affirm the importance of education and we renew our commitment in this field. Education in service of the gospel. From the vision of our faith, we want to make explicit in our educational work that this consistency of the person finds its support in Jesus Christ, the God-man, the first fruits of humanity. It is he who gives us the true meaning of existence. It is in him that we find the enthusiasm to construct a more humane world, because universal fraternity is based on God his Father and the Father of us all. Saint Raffaella Maria had a clear vision of the importance of Christian education in the society of her time, and she expressed it this way in the first documents that were delineating the identity of our institute. From the beginning, the handmaids dedicated themselves wholeheartedly to education, taking care about catechesis and giving the girls a comprehensive formation, using good pedagogical methods. They felt called to respond to the challenges of their times by means of education, inspired by gospel values. They saw also that their educational work had to be based on a life totally centered in the Eucharist. It had to be a response of love to God who loves us even to giving himself and his life for us on the cross. Raffaella Maria was a woman of great desires. That all may know and love him was her deepest longing, she saw no better way than to make Christ available for the adoration of the people, to teach all to recognize him in the Eucharist and to discover the immense love of God manifested in the heart of Jesus. In the year 1881, Saint Raffaella Maria insisted on the importance of education in service of the gospel for the Institute. She stated, Education does not hold a secondary place with us, far from it. This is seen by the fact that we have among our religious qualified and experienced teachers, these teach other religious who seem to have sufficient ability. The 23rd of October 1881 As soon as you become joyful again you will like everything, and you will look at the children especially, not as the impertinent little beings which they are by nature, but with the interest with which one looks at something very precious, for each soul has cost the blood of God himself. Whatever you do for them our Lord receives as done to him, the 12th of June 1887. It is very interesting to note that in all the first communities of the handmaids there were centers of education that the two foundresses implemented, overcoming many difficulties. This heritage received becomes for us a commitment in education in service of the gospel. The handmaids of today commit ourselves to education, which liberates and personalizes, which is concerned more with being than with having, which strives to form persons who are open to pluralism, builders of peace and reconciliation, which promotes justice and love, which is in solidarity with the poor and the weak, 
which is rooted in the Eucharist, which gives life to dedication, fraternity and the sense of joy, which finds its reason for being in the option for Christ and for his kingdom. These fundamental values of our educational project are being generated in the structure of the school, which promotes a synthesis among faith, culture and life. They require an educational community as the soul, where they can develop and, in their turn, contribute to shaping it in interactions that are beneficial for all. The quality of this environment should be one of our first ecological concerns. For this reason education in the service of the gospel has been and continues to be an integral part of the mission of the handmaids. For us the gospel and education are closely united, I agree with the words of Father Kalvenbach. Essay? When he says, educating means to educate by evangelizing and evangelizing is to evangelize by educating. Educating today in the context of globalization. Saint Raffaella Maria understood the lack of Christian education in the society of her time, in the second half of the 19th century. At that time they spoke of the great advances in science, of how the machine would revolutionize the economy, of the growing expansion of theistic materialism. Everything gave the impression that it was a matter of achieving a society without God, one which would be ruled by the cult of reason, liberty, progress or work. Now we are in the year 2000. The world situation is subject to the process of globalization. It shows us how to establish relationships, to produce, to get organized. It gradually homogenizes our dreams, our beliefs, a new culture is coming into being. Not everything is negative in this process. If we look at it with the eyes of Christianity, we would have to say that in itself it is something good, and, in a certain sense, it would be the way to bring about the ideal of all being one. If it had well-focused mechanisms of control, it would offer great opportunities for human progress, however, globalization is focused on the expansion of the market without consideration for the human person, and for this reason it produces very negative effects. In this world there are persons who are intelligent, gifted, and well-educated, but why does the gap between the rich and the poor grow steadily greater? Why are there so many people who are hungry, jobless, at war or in conflict? In these days we have witnessed some horrible scenes in Ethiopia, where many people are dying of hunger. Although 2000 years have passed since the birth of Jesus, this misery still exists. Last October the Synod of Bishops about Europe was held, in which I took part as an auditor. In this meeting they analyzed the current situation of our continent, the European Church wanted to examine itself in regard to what is happening among us. It saw that the culture of globalization, with its focus on economic growth, is generating inequalities, corruption, violence, competition, racism and new forms of poverty born in the womb of wealth. There are outbursts of fundamentalist nationalism and of ethnic cleansing which have given rise to the war in the Balkans. There exists an important and painful migratory movement from the eastern countries and from other continents. There is intolerance toward the countries outside the European Union. In Europe other types of walls and divisions are emerging. All this is affecting the world of values where we can grasp great contrasts. Alongside the movements of solidarity and generosity, there are stances of materialism, hedonism, individualism and consumerism. There is evidence of a growing sensitivity regarding the violation of human rights and aggressions against nature, but also of the lack of interest in social, political and civic commitment. In regard to religion, there is indifference, eclecticism, and practical atheism. The sacred has been deprived of its meaning, and people are acting as though God does not exist. A growing materialism has generated a way of life in which God doesn't count, he is not needed. Morality is adaptable, and has as its criterion whatever makes me feel good. At the same time we witness a thirst for God and for the spiritual, 
but people look for responses in pseudo-religions, sex, new age rather than in the church. The person of Jesus Christ is unknown to many. This culture is generating a new kind of person, inconsistent, a slave to passion, whose horizon is himself and his own gratifications, individualistic, inclined to temporary commitments. In this way, gradually obliterates the awareness of his dignity, his capacity for being free, authentic and in solidarity. In the face of these situations, technology and knowledge are not enough. This world needs men and women who believe in God, who believe that we are all his sons and daughters, that we are a family, and who act according to this belief. Men and women molded according to the gospel, capable of taking definitive options, with a reparative energy which leads them to solidarity with the cause of the poor. Education in service of the gospel can offer to the world these men and women who may build a more just and humane world. We have a great responsibility to society and to the church, which has always been aware that education is an essential element of its mission. On the other hand, the culture of globalization has very specific demands that, well directed, can affect the quality of our center. The mission that is entrusted to us demands utmost quality, competence, and efficiency, values characteristic of our time. Now in our centers we want an excellence that is not only academic, but also human in its fullest sense, a competency that makes the students more able to serve, to share, to feel with the weak. An efficiency that has as its criteria respect for the person, the good of the others, and the life of the poor. Living these values, you can have the conviction that through your work in the schools you are building the kingdom of God. Through education you are recreating the world with him. When we have this conviction, we can give the best of ourselves. Today education is an excellent platform for evangelization. At this time the family often does not transmit the gospel. The school, then, can be one of the privileged places of socialization which transmits the gospel, if we have a clear and explicit project of faith which permeates the entire school atmosphere. I add that the school offers an almost sacred place where you can foster the reparation of family life, strengthening it in human relationships, in responsible parenthood, in a Christian life etc., working on its strengths so that the young people of today, a be more capable of forming the faith-filled families of tomorrow. How important education in the service of the gospel is for the quality of life in the global village of the future. As teachers you have a great work. Today, in the land of St. Raphaela Maria, I invite you to renew your option for this kind of education. Education in service of the gospel. It is an option for Jesus Christ and his kingdom. It is an option for accompanying the life of the other, his human, Christian, personal, social and fraternal life. I remember the words of Paul VI in Evangelia Nunciandi, where he says that today, people need witnesses more than teachers. I say to you that your students need both, the teacher and the witness. Without the witness of your life, education in service of the gospel will remain only a theory on paper. It will have no impact. Your mission in education in service of the gospel requires you to be persons of faith in Jesus Christ, persons who live his values, persons who respect the other, who have patience with the rhythm of growth of each one, persons who love, who pardon, who live the preference for the weak. The students will realize when there is equality in the treatment of persons. They learn at least what the ideal is and it will serve them in the future. I am convinced that relationship is the fundamental vehicle in education, and not only one-on-one -on -one relationships, but also group relationships. It is true that God loves us personally, but it is also true that he calls us to walk through life together. We are his family. A faculty united in its project of education, united in carrying it out, 
where the teachers back one another up, where there is no competition, but instead fraternity, is a faculty which gives witness. Its words and programs will have a great impact on the life of the student body, and the school will be a place where peace and joy prevail. This year, declared by the United Nations as the International Year of the Culture of Peace, and supported by John Paul Roman II in his message of peace to the world on the 1st of January, I invite you to work with even greater determination so that our educational centers may be places of peace and that our young people may grow as persons capable of building a world of peace, solidarity and fraternity. I greatly value the efforts that you make, for example on the Day of Peace, the projects to educate for peace. Even so, we can always do more. A culture of peace is much more than a culture of nonviolence. May our young people learn that peace is something that we create together through our choices, our generosity, our capacity to pardon, to share, to tolerate, to value diversity, to look upon the other as my brother or sister. Then the walls will crumble, the wars will end, hunger will disappear. We will discover the beauty of a simpler life without the need for so many things. We will leave behind the loneliness of individualism and selfishness, and we will enjoy the experience of communion brotherhood which gives life. By her life Saint Raphaela Maria teaches us how to give all for peace, in her we have a great helper. Yesterday, I gave a talk in Madrid about religious government, during the National Week for Institutes of Consecrated Life. At the end of the conference I mentioned the image, which has recently gone around the world, that of John Paul II on Mount Nebo, looking toward Jerusalem. Today also I want to conclude my talk with this image, because it speaks very much to me of the persons who dedicate themselves to teaching, which is a work that is not always easy and gratifying, Mount Nebo is the site from which Moses looked at the Promised Land. He died before entering it. The Pope also contemplates Jerusalem. He is aware of the desert which he has passed through during his life, with its daily surrender. In his heart he holds the Promised Land, reconciliation between countries, religions, hearts, mutual pardon, peace. He knows that he will die before he enters it. He has done everything possible, but has not achieved the goal. Others will follow him. I like this image, because it speaks to me of the truth that the work is of God. Likewise, you educators accompany young people for many years at a privileged stage of their lives. The promised land will come later, in adulthood, when the person has matured, but you have the immense satisfaction of having guided their first steps, of having helped to lay the foundations, of having collaborated with God in the most beautiful task, the formation of persons. And whatever you do for them, our Lord accepts it as having been done to him. CFM E25, 40, 